So this here, this is a UM245R parallel to USB um, device. It, it's, I use it in my um, Spam1 CPU um, as a way of getting I.O. from a laptop or a PC into my project. So along the side here, there's 8 bits parallel to um, serial here. And it's a really handy little device. I've got um, a very log simulation of it too that's pretty accurate. It allows me to control this device from, uh, from the laptop, sending data to my uh, CPU and also to decide when I'm going to get data back from the CPU. So I can actually control the control lines here from this um, serial monitor on the, on the PC. And I thought I'd share what I've learned about this device and uh, probably do a video about the Verilog simulation that I've built of this. So the simulation of my CPU also includes a simulation of this device. And it's fairly accurate, I think. Now, one of the decisions you have to make when you get this device is how you're going to power it. Either you're going to power it off the USB cable, 5 volts down the USB cable, or you're going to power it from the surrounding project. So in my case, I'm going to drive this from the power supply I'm providing to my CPU, but um, someone else might want to drive it off the, off the cable and maybe power the entire project via the 5 volt supply that's coming in off the um, USB cable. And you make the decision on whether you're going to power it uh, from USB or not by this jumper here. And this jumper here connects the 5 volt supply that's coming off USB to uh, the VCC um, of the, uh, the FTDI FT245 chip here and out onto the VCC lines here. When that's removed, um, the, the, the project around it will provide power to that VCC line and that's what will find its way to the, to the FTDI chip here. This jumper at the top here controls something else. So the digital logic, the GPIO pins and the, and the signal pins, they all operate at either 5 volts or 3.3 volts. And if the jump is in this position, then all the logic is operating at 5 volts. And if you push it to the other position, then it's running at 3.3 volts. And there's a little 3.3 volt um, regulator embedded here. So whether it's 5 volts coming from USB or 5 volts coming from your project, that regulator there will regulate it down to 3.3 um, volts. Um, which can be connected up by this header here, put it in the, the position over here to drive all the pins at 3.3 volts instead of 5 volts. I've got it in the 5 volt position because SPAM1 and the CPU I'm building um, is running at 5 volt logic. The configuration it arrives in is actually the configuration for bus powered. So the jumpers are in these two positions that are currently shown here. And if you want to use it, well, it's just a matter of plugging it into a USB cable. And when you do that, if you're on Windows, it'll probably download the drivers without a problem straight, um, straight away, and you'll be able to see it appear as a, as a COM device on your machine. When I plug the device in on my Windows 10 computer, I see a device appear here in the ports, and in this case it appeared on COM7. And I also see a new uh, serial converter appearing in the USB section in, in the Windows Device Manager. So let's say you want to use it in bus pad mode. Well, you'd leave the jumpers in the positions that I've indicated here. And then there's a couple of control lines you need to look out for. Now, this is common to whichever mode you're running it in. There's um, a ready to um, receive and a ready to send line. So um, RTF and, uh, and TXE. So when these lines go low, um, then it indicates that there's either something that the device is either ready to be written to or there's data sitting in its buffer ready for you to read off onto the, um, the parallel I.O. So when TXE is low, then the device is ready to transmit. So you could put some data on these lines here, and then you could toggle the uh, write enable line here low. And if you, uh, if it, when it's ready to be read, so if it's received some data off the serial port, then RXF will go low. And at that point, you can um, pull the read line low, and that's like an output enable, and it will dump the data onto these lines to be read by your project. So that's really easy to use. A couple of lines to monitor, two control lines, the write enable and the read enable, and um, eight parallel um, lines for the data in and data out. There are some other um, pins here that I haven't spoken about, but they, they don't become relevant until you're running this device in self-powered mode. So let's take a quick look at that. Another diagram here, same diagram as before, but there's a couple of, there's a little blue line here, two blue lines that indicate some links that you need to put in if you're going to run this thing in self-powered mode. 
And what's going on here is this. On the board, on the, on the FTDI um, module here, there's actually a, a couple of um, resistors set up in a, uh, a divider, a voltage divider. And the bottom end of that divider on the board here is wired to ground. And the, the, what you're required to do is to connect the five volts from the USB per line via a jumper to the top end of that voltage divider. And the midpoint of the voltage divider, you're required to connect it to the reset pin. And what's going on here is that when a cable's not connected, then this point here in the voltage divider will get pulled down to um, zero volts. And when a cable is connected, then five volts will be on the USB um, pin here. That'll bring this voltage divider up to midway, about 2.5 volts. And that's logic one for this chip, because I think this, log this chip becomes logic one at about 1.9 volts. So what that means is that when the cable's unplugged, then the device as a whole is in reset mode, which puts these pins into a kind of a high impedance state and brings the chip down to, I think, a um, few tens of microamps. But when the cable's connected, then um, the whole device becomes active and it starts consuming a bit more power. And the, um, whether or not these are um, asserting a value depends on whether you've got the read and write set appropriately and whether the data is available. So it's actually really, really easy to use. So here's the device wired up again in um, bus powered mode. And uh, there's a couple of LEDs here. I've put them on those two signal lines. This blue LED is indicating that the device at this point doesn't have any data in its buffer to be read. And the red LED is off, so that's low. So that's signaling that the device is saying, you can write to me. Um, my, I'm ready to be to transmit data back up this, um, the serial line to the PC. Now doing a write with this device is as simple as putting some value onto the uh, data pins here and then taking the write line low. Now that's sent a, a value, I think it's the at character. I think I've got this set to be the ASCII character for at up to the, up to the PC. But let's see some data coming down from the PC to this device. Now what I'm using for this is the Arduino IDE, a serial monitor, um, but you can use any um, serial monitor for this. It's just that the Ardu Arduino one tells you which COM port it's on. It, this, my one's currently on COM port seven, but it could be on, could be on any port. So right, so I'm gonna send the, uh, the zero character at the device. And what you can see there is the blue LED went out. Now that's indicating that there's um, some data in the buffer here ready to be read out. And I've got um, these LED, this LED array sitting on those data pins so we can see what comes out. So if I take the read line low, then we can see these, these have lit up. That is the, the um, two bits uh, four and five high, indicating that's the, the zero um, character in ASCII. If I take it high again, I can send another byte at it. This time I'll send um, the ASCII character one at it. Bring it low again. And there we are, see the next bits being lit up. So like I say, really simple. Um, send some data into the buffer, send a collection of characters into the buffer, and then as the, as the ready to receive line goes low, you take this line low, take the read enable line low, the data gets dumped out onto the bus here, and then you can read it off, um, and then bring that, the, uh, the read enable line high again, and the next byte um, becomes available. So by sequence of toggling the read line, you can empty the buffer. Now, as you can see, I'm wiring a breadboard up here to a, um, a cable that's going into my PC. Um, there's some risk associated with this, and I have to say it now because I actually made a mistake early on. Um, I accidentally shorted out the power rails here on my breadboard, and that shorted out the 5 volt supply on my USB cable, which sorted out the USB port on my laptop. Now, a lot of laptops have got some protection on the USB ports, perhaps all of them, but if you've got a nice laptop and you value it, you might not want to um, connect projects like this directly to the USB port. Now, because I already had one accident, I became pretty cautious about plugging anything into my laptop. Well, projects like this, I mean, it's only going to get worse as I, as I build out my CPU. There'll be more and more breadboards and even greater chance of having a short. So I went out and got myself um, this little device here which is a uh, USB isolator. This end goes into the laptop. That's the cable off to my serial um, device here. And um, this chip here does the USB comms between the laptop and whatever got plugged in here. 
this here, this little device, um, isolates the power supply. So it takes um, a, up to 200 milliamps off the um, host and makes it available here on this end. But the good point about this device here is that it's got uh, continuous short circuit protection. So I could short this out and it will do no harm to this device here. And more importantly, it'll do no harm to my, to my laptop either. And I think the coupling inside here is um, inductive. So if I think I, there's a video out there, I think of someone decapping this chip here and you can see these tiny little inductors they've built. And again, something similar inside here. And that jump, that uh, switch there is controlling the speed at which this device will operate at. I haven't, I haven't messed with that at all. So anyway, it's up to you. If, if you don't mind plugging something into your laptop that might short it out, fine. Um, if you're a bit more cautious, maybe something like this is a good idea. Or maybe a powered hub, a powered USB hub, and then you end up shorting the USB hub out instead of your laptop. But, you know, whatever works for you, frankly. A couple of other things. The data sheet for the chip here, the FT245, um, says that um, if you're going to run this in self-powered mode, then you need to update the EEPROM. To indicate that, there's a little switch you can throw in the EEPROM. There's a utility called FTPROG, which makes that really simple. Um, the reason they say that is because it's part of the USB spec. If your device um, isn't going to um, draw any current off the USB power supply, then it's supposed to send a descriptor up the, up the cable when this device connects to your host um, to indicate that. There's a few other things it will send up that pipe as well. But actually, um, unless you're building a product, there's actually no need to tweak that. You can do it, it doesn't do any harm, um, it doesn't affect the functioning of the device, it does affect the information that the host sees about your device, but that won't affect it either way. Another thing, when you connect your serial monitor to this, it's going via a virtual COM port on Windows. You might be asking yourself, um, well, what board rate should I use? Well, actually, um, this device doesn't care. It just runs at the fastest possible rate. Whatever you've got set in your terminal, it ignores it anyway. So, um, yeah, that's irrelevant. I, I'm using uh, N81, um, and I just ignore the, the board rate. And the last thing, like I said, is that if you're interested in using uh, this device in your, in your project, and you've got a, a very log simulation of your project, then I've got a pretty um, complete um, implementation of this in Verilog, which is available on my GitHub site. So that's it, the UM245 uh, breakout module for um, the FTDI FT245 serial to parallel chip. Really handy.